श्री जोहार सरकार सिक्स मिनट थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग विद अपॉर्चुनिटी टू अपोज द बिल एज यू हैव हर्ड फ्रॉम द ऑनरेबल मैम I have not given opportunity to oppose the bill. This is your discretion. <laughs> you have, you have a permit. No, no. To oppose or not to oppose is your discretion. I would submit to you, sir, first and foremost, as a citizen of India, see the devastation that environment laws have have failed to control. Air pollution, water pollution, environment sensitive zone, wildlife, forest act, each one remains a. Uh, devastated pillar of failure this one is just one more addition sir we have seen governments for the last 70 years plus but we have not seen such a determined government a government so determined to use the legitimacy of law of structures and destroy the heart and core of it this one is just an act that brings in to legitimize offenses mining effluent co2 they are full of exemptions there are 200 plus state and central laws and they control but it was ultimately people and crusaders like mc mehta who had to come before the supreme court to make them effective in another regime never mind now the sustained the specific reason for objecting to this bill is a as my honorable friend has mentioned छुटकारा दो एग्जेम्ट करो भय मारो भय मारो भय किससे तो ऑफेंडर हैज टू गेट स्केड इन अ स्टेट अ स्टेट कैन नॉट रन अ गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट रन ऑन लव एंड फ्रेश एयर वेयर देर इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ ऑफेंडिंग अगेंस्ट ह्यूमन सोसाइटी पॉल्यूटिंग द एटमोस्फेयर पॉल्यूटिंग वॉटर पॉल्यूटिंग डिस्ट्रॉइंग फॉरेस्ट द ऑफेंडर मस्ट हैव अ सेंस ऑफ फेयर because he is offending against nature against humanity this government cannot go on exempting offenders granting them reprieves this act is full of them this act goes in again for centralization of powers there is section 21 in the mother act which says that <coughs> state government and state boards may take power here there is an attempt to centralize everything by bringing all the powers towards section 25 26 and 27 25 is to stop effluents from spoiling the ganga the yamuna and other water bodies 26 26 is for those who have already got exemption like the kanpur tanneries and others to go in for certain effluent discharge all the sections are being diluted sir there have been more exemptions under the environment sensitive zones than punishments the mood of the government is very clear they have brought in a term called the adjudicating officer that could be a central officer or a state officer incidentally sir all the directions in a federal polity are to be consultative but here there is a unilateral absolute unilateral powers with the central government to determine whether a state officer can be an adjudicate officer aap kon ho mujhe batane ki mere state mein kisko power diya jaye so this one is actually an anti federal law 45c of the present act or the present bill says that any act by an adjudicate officer any decision by an adjudicate officer can be appealed against straight to the national green tribunal sir between a town that has an effluent problem and the national green, green tribunal there is a state I, i have no objection if it goes to the ngt the only the question is of expenses the poor men who fight against industrialists out to destroy mining that is out to destroy those industries that discharge effluents and make the holy yamuna look bubbly full of foam foam of chemical foam wo bhag jayenge because uske paas taakat hai uske paas paise hai wo ja ke jeet jayenge national green tribunal mein aur jo inke khilaf baat karte wo ek minute bhi aage nahi badh sakenge so why are you bringing a section that goes straight from the panchayat to the national green tribunal beech mein kisi ko rakhiye taki we can go to the state headquarters and file cases there are what are the punishments there are punishments 
two and a half years to seven years, but they have been made so small, so conspicuous, and as my learned friend said, the entire intention is to make it, uh, make it punishment booked, punishment booked law, without some amount of stringent fear. Sir, you cannot tackle a subject like environment. We are going and making false promises. I'm using the word false promises, sir. False promises to the COP that we will be bringing in renewable energy. My good friend is sitting there, Power Minister, that we will bring in renewable energy to the extent of 50% by 2030. I'm sure that the capacity for renewable energy will reach somewhere near 50%. But the catch lies not in capacity. The catch lies in generation. And we can say with authority that India cannot have more than 30, 31% powers from renewable energy sources. So why do we go and make international promises when you know that 2030, 2030, 70% of the pollution uh, of the energy will be drawn by carbon emitting thermal fuels. Doctor, it, the spirit of this act is in that direction. And I seek your indulgence to oppose it in no other uncertain, in no uncertain terms. Thank you. Sir. Dr. Shokumar Mittan.